Hi, Yermila. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. <laughs> How lovely. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, so, okay. yeah. Let, let me just give a short introduction, if you don't mind. Uh, yes, please go. Please. Thank you, Skip. Okay. We, we are... We are safely online um, on YouTube, and we have one person watching on YouTube, but that usually goes up pretty quickly. Um, and we have about 20 here so far, and so I will be admitting more. And I'm going to go to speaker view now so that we can do the program. Um, Eva, you have co-hosting power, so that means you can share your screen. And um, uh, just asking everyone to um, go ahead and mute your mics during Eva's presentation, unless you have a question. And then uh, we're a small group tonight, relatively. So I think if you have a question, Eva wanted to go ahead and respond to questions as we went. And so just uh, speak up and, and uh, we will recognize you. Um, what did I do here? Huh. I'm sorry. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> okay. So uh, good evening. My name is Skip Conover and I'm the uh, host on the Carl Jung Depth Psychology Reading Group uh, YouTube channel and the organizer of these uh, Wisdom Path Colloquia is what we've come to call them now. And um, tonight I'm delighted to have my friend uh, of about a decade now, Eva Ryder, uh, who's going to explain to us about the connection between the Tarot and the Kabbalah. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I did have occasion to start with the Tarot about 25 years ago myself, uh, but somehow I missed the Kabbalah connection. So I really wanted Eva to uh, orient me there and I'm delighted that she agreed to do it. So without further ado, Eva, go ahead. Thank you so much, Skip. Thank you so much for hosting it. And it's so lovely to see so many friends here um, we haven't seen in a long time. And those of you who are joining for the first time, some of you are quite familiar with this work. Um, I have been following this path for almost 40 years now, since um, Dion Fortune's Mystical Kabbalah fell off a shelf um, in 1981. And I, about the same time, I began my tarot and astrology journey. And then uh, somehow it all intersected with Jung and a very, a, 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 eventually with the work of Marian Woodman. So I will be sharing uh, an extensive um, as some of you know, uh, body of images. So this is going to begin the keynote. So I'll probably begin with that and just speak from there if that's all right. So I'm going to go ahead and share screen um, and we'll just begin from here. It'll, um, can you all not quite see my screen? Um, Can you see the screen? Uh, we see it. I don't see an image on it at the moment. There you go. Okay. Got it. Perfect. All right. Okay. Well, welcome to the Mystic Fool. And um, some of you have been on this journey with me, and some of you are new to it. So a little bit about the Tree of Life. Um, the Tarot fits on the Tree of Life like a hand in a glove. And that said, Jung also will be incorporating some of Jung's work here, also fits on the tree like a hand in a glove. And so it, this will, uh, it's an intersection in the synthesis of these many components that come together because it is multivalent. And meaning that there are so many dimensions that it's much easier to approach it through images. So the Tree of Life is an ancient and very precise map or mandala. 
um, which describes the relationship between the macrocosm and the microcosm and uh, the above, so below, the, uh, the within, so without. And it basically, I am approaching it from a hermetic standpoint as opposed to the Hebrew Kabbalah, simply because we're also incorporating the Tarot. I will only be incorporating right now the major arcana, which are the 22 cards that fit onto the 22 pathways of the tree of life. Um, of course, there is much more um, and the minor arcana fits on the spheres themselves. So just a little more about that. So it, the tree of life is an archetypal image. It's a glyph, it's a mandala, it's a map. Uh, as I mentioned, microcosm of uh, the above, so below, the inner, the outer, the masculine, feminine, the yang and yin. It's the serpent, the kundalini, and the double helix of the DNA and the caduceus. It links spirit and psyche and matter, or if you like, cosmos and psyche and matter. So if the universe is a giant circuit wherein the mystery and power of life flows into matter and is mediated and transformed through psyche by making the unconscious into the conscious, then perhaps reason and imagination are our keys. This center place is the grail, it is the self and its beauty, which is the center of the tree. So I'm going to move forward because there's a lot to move through. And I'll be moving quite quickly because there are over a hundred slides. So um, here is a 16th century image of the tree. And you can see here, we're going to be speaking a lot from the standpoint of Mercurius Hermes, who is the messenger of the gods and is the bridge and the mediator between spirit and matter. And you can see that the ancients were quite familiar with this, at least in this medieval or Renaissance image because this triangle is the symbol of Mercury in the center. And um, here we move down. Um, and there is much to meditate on in these images, of course, um, but we, um, we will return. Here is the tree. This is the Hermetic, the Kabbalistic tree of life itself. And I'll be spending a little bit of time here. Um, this image up here is Keter, which means the crown. And in this time of the crown, of uh, the opening of the corona, we have, um, we are literally being asked to open this and to ground this new energy that is coming in through us. This, in, coming down the middle pillar, um, we have this over here, which is called Doth, which is the hidden sphere, it's the abyss, it's also knowledge. Um, now here we have to ferret, which is the sun and it's the gold. So when we're moving through the alchemical processes, which we'll be doing down the road in my next class, we'll be incorporating um, the lightning path, which goes this way back and forth and the arriving from lead, which is here in the great mother and to gold. And then moving down, this is the moon called the foundation. And we land here in the quaternity Jung referred to as the earth, air, fire, earth, and water. And so we have also, uh, it's also a way of looking at this as um, how we bring um, spirit into matter uh, during this process, um, also squaring the circle, which we won't be getting into this. Now, the back and forth here, all of these signify planets. Um, so there's a cosmological aspect to this and also elements. So we can see the alchemical. Now I'm going to move forward because there's much. And of course, homage to Mercurius because he's also Hermes. And also, uh, even though we're not in Mercury retrograde, you never know with technology. And it's always good to uh, pay homage to Mercurius, who is the messenger of the gods, is behind me and links spirit and matter. This particular image, which is by Jofra Boschard, um, actually, if you look at it, you can see the tree embedded within it. You have on the left side, the great mother, and she is the creator and destroyer of form. You can see here, these three elements, the sphere, the triangle, 
and the cube, which intimates the idea that we are moving spirit into matter through the mediating function of Mercurius, who is also soul. Now you can see that Mercurius here, on the, excuse me, on the left side, we have the great father. And here we have nature, Jupiterian expansion, where is she is Saturnian and more of a constricting energy. And Mercurius himself is pointing as above, so below. And below, let's go down for a minute, as you can see is wrapped in the, the uh, caduceus, in the, the serpent. We can see the moon, which is the lunar, and below that is the feminine arrived. And this is our journey. We're going to be going towards around bringing spirit into matter. She's pointing downwards through, this, uh, through the earth and behind her are the rivers, um, which also connect uh, to the tree, as you will see. Clearly, Jofra Boschart was very much an alchemist and was working with this material. We can also see above, besides here, is Teferit, the golden sun, the center, uh, the heart, and reaching upward is this divine child. And here's the crown. Um, now, what's interesting is about this, I had just completed uh, Jung's uh, Liber Novus, and he spoke of the new energy, the new dispensation, the new God being the divine child. I thought that was extraordinary. This is an amazing image. We'll come back to it. So I wanted to read this, even though it's long, because I think it speaks to the heart of what the tree is. And this is the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. Uh, who was the father of alchemy, astrology, and magic, and the Egyptian uh, initiator. Um, we don't know if he actually existed. Dates back to, I believe, the second century. But this is relates specifically to the way the tree operates. So true without error, certain and most true, that which is above is that which is below. And that which is below is as that which is above, to perform the miracles of the one thing. And as all things were from one, by the mediation of one, so from this one thing come all things by adaptation. Its father is the sun, its mother is the moon, the wind. It carried it in its belly, and the nurse thereof is the earth. It is the father of all perfection and the consummation of the whole world. Its power is integral if it be turned to earth. Thou shalt separate the earth from the fire, the subtle from the coarse, gently and with much ingenuity. It ascends from earth to heaven and descends again to earth and receives the power of the superiors and the inferiors. Thus thou hast the glory of the whole world. Therefore, let all obscurity flee before thee. This is the strong fortitude of all fortitude, overcoming every subtle and penetrating every solid thing. Thus the world was created. Hence are all wonderful adaptations of which this is the manner. Therefore am I called Hermes the thrice great, having the three parts of the philosophy of the whole world. That is finished, which I have to say concerning the operation of the sun. So basically, this is all there is. I mean, this is uh, the tree uh, depicts um, the a cosmological map for the universe. And so it is in itself the, an archetype. And here we can see the tree of life from the builders of the Adidum. Uh, this is uh, their tree. And you can see that the occultists of which Paul Foster case was connected originally to the Golden Dawn, um, worked with working with these um, major arcana card uh, keys moving up from the kingdom, which is here, the Malkut, which is the, as we were saying, the, um, the, uh, the earth. Um, if the, the fool's journey going up, we would begin here with the Anima Mundi, which is the world card, and then it twists back and forth in the manner of the caduceus going up 
and arriving up here, uh, the, the fool and the magician are here. The magician, of course, the magus being connected to Mercurius and arriving up here in the one light, the, the uh, beginning, the spark, the first spark is the crown. Um, we'll be moving through here, wisdom and understanding and the crown together um, constitute what we'll be talking about is the Sophia and returning the Sophia energy um, in our time, um, in this extraordinary time in which we're living, um, this birth canal we're living through of bringing this energy back into matter, um, enlivening and um, illuminating matter. So here's the uh, Kabbalistic tree of life and the 22 pathways. Um, the class that I taught uh, most recently, a Fool's Odyssey, um, some of you were there. Um, we went through, uh, we made this journey, and it also was made in the, uh, for the Depth Psychology Alliance three years ago and is available, will be available on my website, um, all nine classes. Um, so here is um, from Dion Fortune, this mighty all-embracing glyph, she's speaking of the tree, of the soul of man and of the universe, by virtue of its logical associations of symbols, evokes images in the mind. But these images are not randomly evolved, but follow along well-defined association tracks on the universal mind. The symbol of the tree is to the universal mind what the dream is to the individual ego. It is a glyph synthesizing, synthesized from subconscious to represent hidden forces. I love that. So here's Jung. No tree, it is said, can go to heaven unless its true roots reach down to hell. And so we can see, um, we can also see the dark side, the shadow side. There's always a shadow side. Um, when I first began to work with this material and teach it, I the Red Book that was in 2004 had not yet been uh, released. And um, in the process of working with this, I realized that Jung had definitely worked with the tree. And so no surprise, here's an image of the tree um, from the Red Book. And so this is from Jung. And I included this because he's speaking directly to this image of the tree. Now this came of course much, bef uh, much after the Red Book because uh, this is from Memories, Dreams, Reflections. And this was after Jung had his heart attack. He had a vision. And the vision was of the tree of life in the garden. And the Malkut he speaks of is earth. It's the kingdom. And Tiferet is the sun. It's the soul. It's the beauty. Um, and it's really as far as we can go in um, embodying the energy of the uh, sun behind the sun, which is Keter. So he says here, I myself was so it seemed in the uh, Pardes de Riminom, the garden of pomegranates and the wedding of Tiferet with Malkut was taking place. Or else I was Rabbi Simon ben Jokai, whose wedding in the afterlife was being celebrated. It was a mystic marriage. This is as it appears in the Kabbalistic tradition. I cannot tell you how wonderful it was. I could only think continually now this is the garden of pomegranates. Now this is the marriage of Malkut with Tiferet. I do not know exactly what part I played in it. At bottom it was I myself, I was the marriage and my beautitude was that of a blissful wedding. So this is the Cunuctio experience that Jung had in this vision uh, within the garden itself. Um, so of course, uh, from Nietzsche, the snake which cannot cast its skin has to die, as well as minds which are prevented from changing their opinions. They cease to be mind, interesting quote. This is from Michelangelo's um, from the garden. And you can see the serpent, very important image. Um, now Jung spoke in the philosophical tree that we are trees. And the crown, as you can see, comes from our roots. So we are upside down trees. Our roots are in, are connected to the kingdom, which is really significant. It's actually the re reverse of what 
we would imagine. So uh, this is a reverse tree. And here you can see the uh, Malkut, which is the kingdom and the quaternity, uh, the sun, and the entire tree laid out with the crown. And of course, the trinity, the triangle overhead, which is the supernal triangle. We'll be talking more about that. Again, the mystical world tree, the tree of the Sephiroth, which are the circles on the tree, also signifies man implanted in paradise by the roots of his hair. And uh, here are two images, one from Robert Flunt um, going way back. Um, I'm not sure what year that would have been, um, but between the 14th and the 16th centuries. And here we have an image of the DNA, similar, very similar, the um, caduceus path that we incorporate. William Blake, the upper levels, um, and from the red book, um, Young Serpent. And he says, the serpent is the earthly essence of man of which he is not conscious. It is a mystery that flows to him from the nourishing earth mother. So again, from the earth upward. Um, this is from Terence McKenna and as always a master of language. He says, it is the imagination that argues for the divine spark within human beings. It is literally a descent of the world soul into all of us. Uh, image by Michael Chabal. The soul demands your folly, not your wisdom from Jung. And I'm going to go ahead and play this on Jung, if, since we still have some time. Uh, it's relatively short on imaginate, imagination. When you observe the world, you see people, you see houses, you see the sky, uh, you see tangible objects. But when you observe yourself within, you see moving images, a world of images, uh, generally known as fantasies. Uh, yet these uh, fantasies are facts. It is, it is a fact that a man has such and such a fantasy. And it is such a tangible fact, for instance, that when a man has a certain fantasy, uh, another man may lose his life. Or uh, a bridge is built. These houses were all fantasies. Everything you do here, all of the houses, everything was fantasy to begin with. And fantasy has a proper reality. It is, that is not to be forgotten. Fantasy is not nothing. It is, of course, not a tangible object. But it is a fact, nevertheless. It is, uh, uh, see, a form of energy. Uh, despite the fact we can't measure it. it. It is a manifestation of something. And that is a reality that is just uh, a reality as, for instance, the Peace Treaty of Versailles or something like that. It is no more. You can't show it. But it, 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 it has been a fact. And, and so uh, the, the psychical events are facts, are realities. And when you observe the stream of images within, you observe an aspect of the world, of the world within. So there we are. Um, so the imagination, Jung speaks of the reality of the psyche is a fact. And so from the imagination, um, we create the world and it creates us synchronistically. So um, this is an image by Jake Badley. And of course, um, you can see this is the magician. Um, you can see him playing with the four elements that the magician does, um, air, fire, earth, and water, and much more here. <laughs> so, um, and here's the fool from the Rider Waite deck, as you can see, um, he's about to step off the cliff. Um, he's looking upward towards the sun. His number is zero, which is spirit. And therefore, is he the one who makes the journey in all of us? We are all the fool. And um, the sun overhead, he's got the white rose of purity. And he's got his little white dog at his feet to remind him that he's about to step off the cliff. And 
he's got fire on his on his shirt. Um, so is the sparks and the wheel of fortune. So he's got it all. And as we all do at the beginning, um, in our innocence, we begin the journey. And in the words of William Blake, if the fool would persist in his folly, he would become wise. So the fool is the one who makes the journey and wears all the masks and is spirit reunited with matter through the action of soul or psyche, which is mediated again by Mercurius. So why is it a fool's journey? Uh, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? And here are some questions um, of what is Tarot and how does it work within this structure, it, within this um, scaffolding that is this tree? So Tarot is a, self, a journey of self-discovery and understanding, potentially leading to wisdom because it is um, we're using image and symbol and metaphor, which is the language of the unconscious. So it is where, where the collective meets the personal. Um, and what is Tarot's meaning and purpose for us in the 21st century psyche? Perhaps that question is yet to be answered. Amplification, yes. Synchronicity, yes. It's an archetypal depiction of initiatory stages of life, most certainly it is. Um, can be divination, inviting the gods for guidance. Uh, most, mostly uh, when we're using the 78 cards, the full deck, um, we use it for divination. Meditation and active imagination. These 22 cards of the major arcana are the uh, archetypal cards and therefore are um, often used for meditation as they depict the in, uh, journey of initiation. Is it a game of chance? Yes, as of all life. And a guide to face or fate or destiny? Uh, and here we go. So Jung says, uh, if one wants to form a picture of the symbolic process, the series of pictures found in alchemy are good examples. It also seems as if the set of pictures in the tarot cards were distantly descended from the archetypes of transformation. The symbolic process is an experience in images and of images. Its development usually shows as an enantiodromia, a swing structure like the text of the I Ching, where we move from one side to the other, and so represents a rhythm of negative, positive, loss and gain, dark and light. And here again, um, we see that same image um, and I'm just going to go through these, the crown, um, wisdom, understanding, mercy, severity, victory, let's not forget beauty, which is six, um, splendor, foundation, and kingdom. Now I want to mention, um, because we won't be going through this much, is that all of the minor arcana cards, for those of you who play with Tarot, all the aces are connected to the crown. And the twos here, the threes to understanding, the fours to mercy, all the fives to severity, all the sixes to beauty, all the sevens to victory, eight to splendor, nines to foundation, and 10 is the kingdom. And the way we, we have, I have placed these and we'll be coming the, to these, um, is that the crown is connected to Neptune um, because this is where we incubate from and across to Uranus because this is the place of the great father in the zodiac to the great mother on the pillar of severity. By the way, this is the pillar of severity. This is the pillar of mercy. It is very interesting that the pillar of severity is the feminine side of the tree. Um, Again, because the great mother sitting here is Saturn is the creator and destroyer of form, but always balanced out by the other side. And of course, when we move down to the lightning path, we can see that. So um, we've got here Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the sun, 
Venus, Mercury, the moon, and Earth. So where are we going? We're returning. We're bringing the fool back to the world soul. The fool is on a journey to animate matter in the anima mundi, which is the final card down here. And this is the card that links the earth with the astral plane um, over here in the moon. So same thing. Now here are the three triangles in the tree. You may have noticed the top triangle is called the uh, supernal triangle and is the archetypal world. All, um, although that does move downward. The middle triangle is the philosophical or ethical triangle and is connected to psyche and soul. So, and the bottom triangle here is the astral or the uh, subtle body, um, the world of dreams and uh, the world of the imaginal. And we descend again, this little link down here is again into the earth. So that, so in working with it, um, we can see that the, Supernal triangle is connected to the spirit world. The soul being the uh, triangle can, why the triangle? So let's talk a little bit about the triangle um, because it is an image of the tension of the opposites and the transcendent third. And so it is a symbol of not only of the link between matter, which is the cube, and spirit, which is the sphere, um, the, the divine, but also because it has the possibility of transformation by within that holding the tension of the opposites, um, the third can come into being, transporting us into a completely different reality. So it is the mediating function and the soul itself is a mediator between spirit and matter. So here we have the lightning path and the serpent paths that we've been talking about. The tree of life there and back again. And we can see the lightning path, which is um, literally lightning. We, many of us have been experiencing some of this uh, right now through um, this alchemical processes that we've been experiencing on the planet itself. On the West Coast, we've been experiencing extreme fire which is connected to the calcinatio, the breakdown of the old dross matter, the prima materia. And it came through just as the planet Uranus went stationary on August the 15th and began to move backward. Um, so in that process, as it moved backward retrograding, we began um, an activation internally of this transformational process, which is connected to lightning, electricity, transformation and revolution, and we can see that. So this energy is the lightning path because it's Uranian. And the serpent path is comes from the earth up and it is more of the path of the occultists. Dion Fortune said the mystics would go the straight middle pillar. They, um, whereas the occultists tend to use the mind and would we would move through these spheres, these spheres again, which um, denote not only the um, planets, the cosmology, but also the structure of the alchemical processes, the elements, and within the body, the chakra system. And so it's a slow moving journey um, when we take this path. And the fool's journey has been going from matter to spirit. Um, so here's uh, David Bowie is my muse and um, he is um, in this image. He is wearing an outfit of the lightning path and he is drawing the tree of life. Um, behind him is the tree of life. And he said, the truth is of course that there is no journey. We are arriving and departing all at the same time. So moving forward from that, um, Here's the serpent path. And you can see how the serpent path the, comes together, the, the path of the caduceus within the body. So part of this work, the
the objective tree, which we have just looked at, where we can meditate on it is one way to approach the tree and it is using the logos. But to use the eros function is to back into the tree as Dion Fortune said, which can then bring Marion Woodman's work of bringing the subtle body back in um, em embodying soul uh, comes through this caduceus energy that within the body. You can see the tree in this image. Again, in this, the caduceus on the tree of life, you know, from the very top here, down here to the very, to the cube of matter. And this, um, this is Doth, this is that abyss, the point of knowledge, of hidden knowledge. And here we have this, the seal of Solomon is actually an image of the intersection of the uh, triangle of fire and the triangle of water coming together and signifies the center of the tree uh, to ferret, which is beauty. Again, um, see if I can move this down, whoops. I'm going to move back. So Jung says, and many of you know this quote, it's one of my favorites, the right way to wholeness is made up of fateful detours and wrong turnings. It is a longissima via, not straight, but snake-like, a path that unites the opposites in the manner of the guiding caduceus, a path whose labyrinthine twists and turns are not lacking in terrors. And again, you can see the two uh, crowned in this case, because they're at the top, the two by Fro Ben, uh, Fro uh, kissing at the top, as Marion Woodman used to say, with the little bird at the top, which represents the dove and the Sophia. So again, another image by Jofra Boschard as above, so below. Now this is how the energy moves. And I wanted to share this image because whether you're coming at the tree from the bottom up and you're looking at it or from the crown down, you are, it is a spiral journey. And it will go up or down, but the center, which is Teferet, the sun, um, is right over here, if you can see my cursor. But the energy moves um, in both directions. There we go. So again, from Jung, the self is not only the center, and the self is that center of the tree, that Teferit, that beauty that he speaks of. The self is not only the center, but also the whole circumference, which embraces both conscious and unconscious. It is the center of this, and I can't see this because, um, whoops, it's hidden. Um, just as the ego is the center of consciousness. This is from uh, Collective Works, Psychology and Religion. And here is the Thoth deck fool who is a Bacchus, much more Dionysian, been around the block kind of fool, um, who is, <laughs> right? um, and he is falling through, in this case, into matter and to the anima mundi. Now this again is from the Thoth deck. And um, the beauty of this particular deck is that not only does it have the Hebrew letters, which I'm not, uh, familiar with all of them, but it also has the astrological symbols. And this is Saturn. And what's really important about this is at the top of the tree, that black sphere is connected to Saturn, lead, the great mother, the, the prima materia. She manifests again as the anima mundi, a spirit embodied in matter, also in Saturn, is called Saturn. And here we have the whole uh, fixed, uh, Signs of the Zodiac, Taurus, Aquarius, um, uh, Leo, and um, Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, and um, what am I missing? <laughs> um, Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, uh, fire, uh, fire, fire, it should be right here. Um, of course, Scorpio for water. So here, here is the, uh, them laid out, the 22 cards. 
um, not in order, but you can see that there are three signs, three levels, seven each. Uh, there are 21 cards, both in this and in the Thoth Tarot. Um, the fool being the one that makes the journey is off to the side. These are all of the initiatory pathways, the journey that he makes, that the fool makes. Um, and, um, and they're not in order. I mean, it's certainly the occultists have laid out the pathways um, going from um, matter going up and into spirit. But um, we go through these initiations. You will recognize some of them as we move forward numerous times in our lives because it is a spiral journey. So we will repeat them on different levels as we come closer to the center, to the source. So here's the tree once again, and here I've laid out what I've already gone over, um, which are the planets for those of you who um, are familiar with the cosmology I laid out here. Um, the outer planets, which are Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, and Saturn, these three were not known by the ancients, and so were not included in the original um, texts. And so I have arbitrarily, in effect, <laughs> uh, laid them out this way. Now I put Pluto here because this particular path is really important. This is where the high priestess moves. She is the one who crosses the desert from spirit into matter and this is her pathway. And it's called knowledge. It is the abyss. It is the path we go through through our initiations and through any kind of birth canal or death canal. And so um, this is really important. It's actually called Doth. Um, and now it makes sense when you're working um, with the cards that you can see that these particular spheres, not only do they correspond to the four suits of the minor arcana, but they also correspond to understanding them. Like for instance, the Mars cards are connected to fives. And the fives are always times of change and transformation, and they're difficult. Um, all of the fives in the minor arcana are challenging cards, not so much in, in the major arcana, which is the hierophant, but it's still a mediating. Um, and of course, the sun, um, there are, this is a system of correspondences. So the sun is connected to, to the sun card, which is down here. And, um, it's only in playing with it that we begin to understand. So um, here is um, a diagram that made many years ago. Um, anima and animus actually could go higher up here, but it is a diagram from a Jungian perspective of how the tree would, would look. Now, here you can see the, the supernal triangle up here. And then you can see here that the, uh, philosophical, the ethical triangle as it's called, is the reverse. So we have learned because this is a cosmological system that everything on earth is the reverse, the exact reverse of what it is on the divine level uh, in spirit. And that's really an interesting thing to remember. So we arrive here in soul and then the, uh, this triangle over here which um, mirrors this one, the, the soul being the sun, and I put ego here, but this is also the realm of the subtle body and the astral triangle. Um, the shadow is everywhere. I, um, it's, it's everywhere, it's behind the tree, there's a clip off with the entire tree, um, but everything has a shadow and a light side, of course. And we arrive here in body. And of course the persona, then manifest as all these different cards as well. So this is just, uh, so here we have the elemental uh, correspondences to play with. Um, and as I was saying, you, you can see, I didn't add in the net these, which would, um, I don't even know what would correspond with Neptune, but uranium, I suppose, plutonium, but here is lead the black, the lead, the prima materia, um, the prima materia that is the elixir of life, that is the philosopher's stone, but 
both before and after. And it is the place of the great mother on the pillar of severity. And as I said, our goal is the gold, is to transform the lead in here is the sun um, by going through these processes. Remember that if we're looking at it from the bottom up or the top down, it is a spiral. Therefore, this is in the center of the spiral. So we have the Jupiterian tin, iron, which is connected to Mars, copper, Venus, Mercury, Mercury, silver, which is the moon, and the earth, which is the quaternity. So just an, another view. And uh, back to Jung, he's, uh, according to Jung, alchemy is a symbolic representation of the individuation process. Alchemy is a nature philosophy and is of great consideration in the Middle Ages because it throws a bridge to the past, the gnosis, the knowing, the gnosis itself, and also to the future, the modern psychology of the unconscious. So Jung says, only by discovering alchemy have I clearly understood that the unconscious is a process and that egos rapports with the unconscious and its contents initiate an evolution more precisely, a real metamorphosis of the psyche. So the tree itself is a path of involution coming down and evolution going up. Um, now, this again is a medieval image and an extraordinary one, I think, because it depicts um, up here, of course, the Saturnian being um, who is also the alchemist with the compass in his hand. We have the the um, alchemical processes of the fire the, and um, the dew here. So it could be the, um, the dew of the solution, the solutio from the calcinatio. And then here we come down, this particular, this is sulfur, which is fire. And this of course is the phoenix rising from its ashes, a really apt image for what we're going through right now on our planet. Mercurius here um, as mediator arriving in the cube on earth once again. And of course we have the sun and the moon. So within this, we can see all of it, the alchemy and the hermetic tree. So back to Jung, a lot of Jung. <laughs> um, the alchemist saw the union of opposites under the symbol of the tree. And it's therefore not surprising that the unconscious of present day man who no longer feels at home in his world and can base his existence neither on the past that is no more nor on the future that is yet to be should hearken back to the symbol of the cosmic tree rooted in this world and growing up to heaven, the tree that is also man. In the history of symbols, this tree is described as the way of life itself, a growing into that which eternally is and does not change, which springs from the union of opposites and by its eternal presence also makes that union possible. It seems as if it were only through an experience of symbolic reality that man, vainly seeking his own existence and making a philosophy out of it, can find his way back to a world in which he is no longer a stranger in psychological types. And uh, this little quote from uh, Charles Williams, uh, who was a, um, one of the inklings. So he was um, among uh, Tolkien and C.S. Lewis's group. And he wrote a book called The Greater Trumps, which is um, what the major arcana is called. Um, it is said that the shuffling of the cards is the earth and the pattering of the cards is the rain and the beating of the cards is the wind and the pointing of the cards is the fire. That's of the four suits, but the greater trumps, it said, are the meaning of all process and the measure of the everlasting dance. So, so down to the cards, the 22 cards on, are invite the animation of image in amplification, active imagination and synchronicity. And I, I'm not going to get into that for the sake of time. Um, so who am I? Um, wisdom begins with the knowledge that we do not know. Therefore, the question is always the key. Um, the symbol for the fool, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the circle, and is also the symbol for infinity. So 
that which has no beginning and no end. And here we have the Ouroboros, also a symbol of the Alpha and the Omega. And uh, here, Tarot, again, is a method of linking the collective unconscious, the archetypal realm of the gods, with the world of the personal ego, thus creating a pictorial bridge between the worlds. So Michael Chabal. We meet ourselves time and again in a thousand disguises on the path of life. Ayum. Another of Jake Badley's beautiful images. And the Unio Mystica, which is, this is a triptych by Jofra Boschard, which basically lays it all out, um, as does his Mercurius. Um, you can see in this image, everything. You can see the tree itself um, rooted in the feminine down here and the winding path of the serpent up the, going through um, these, the six pointed star, um, but also the five points to star, which is a symbol of the Adam Kadmon, which is a symbol of the, the Anthropos, the human being. And um, on either side, Again, here is the image of the great mother on the other side, the great father and all kinds of interesting images of uh, creativity here of the, um, um, this uh, Pegasus, Mercurius, and of course, Venus, Aphrodite and all the souls going down and around. So the process of life is one of revolution and evolution of circling of decay and renewal. Um, so here are our players. Um, and this is the Rider Waite deck. Um, it's the Radiant Rider Waite deck. And uh, beginning with the Magician, the High Priestess, the Emperor, the Hierophant, the Lovers, the Chariots and Strength, Hermit, Wheel of Fortune, Justice. I know going through very fast, but we'll be going through them again. The Hangman, which is a reversal. Death, which is not physical death, but it's part of that transformational process in the cutting away that we've been speaking of as necessary in transformation and temperance. Um, of course, this is an French and uh, German, actually. Uh, this is the, um, you'll notice perhaps, and I often will point this out, um, that um, the devil card is actually similar to the lovers. It's just um, in spirit, in service to matter instead of matter in service to spirit. But as has been pointed out, their chains are very loose, so they can be removed. <laughs> Quite easily, it's an illusion. And we all know this image, the tower, the star, the moon, the sun, judgment, and finally, the world. So I'm going to move through these. Um, and as you, if you would like, you, there are questions. I mean, I'm not going to get into them too much because there are so many and for the sake of time. But there are, these are the 22 cards I've, I've, pulled the magician and the uh, magus, uh, the, magi the rider weight and the thoth deck side by side. So you can get a, a glimpse. Um, this eight pointed symbol is eight, but it is also the symbol for uh, eternity and is um, over the head of this card and also strength and Here we have the high priestess. And uh, again, importantly, she is holding the um, Torah or the tarot or the book of knowledge because she's the one who makes the journey across the desert. Um, her name in Hebrew is Gimel, which means camel. And you can see that portrayed um, in this particular card. She's connected to the moon and also to the rivers. There are four rivers that flow behind her on the tree. And she's veiled. She is not a manifest goddess. She makes, she's connecting the two triangles between the supernal and the 
the world of, of soul, but she is, um, she's not manifest. The manifestation arrives in here in the Empress, um, in the threes. And the threes all have to do with this divine creativity, which is connected to uh, the transformation of, um, as we were speaking of these two sides, the tension of the opposites and the creation creativity. She's wearing that star in the middle one. I added this, this is from the uh, Paul Foster case deck, the Boda deck. Um, it's quite beautiful. And the green is important. The colors are significant because the green is connected to Venus. So all the colors, and I neglected to mention this so far, are connected to the spheres. The colors on the spheres are purposeful. So here we have the emperor and he has his leg in this triangle, which you'll often see um, in the hangman, it's reversed. Uh, again, here's this uh, triangle, um, but there's a solidity. This card is four, so it has to do with uh, solidity. And he's also uh, connected to um, the higher spheres on the tree, um, which in my longer class, um, we went into great detail because we worked with each of these cards, three of them a week um, and could have slowed it down even so. Uh, these are symbols for Aries. So he, there's, um, he is connected to Aries. This is fire, it's new beginnings. And here we have the Hierophant. Um, and again, quite different. The Hierophant looks like the Pope, but this three tiered crown he's wearing signifies the three layers on the tree. Again, the three triangles. He's pointing to the above, he's a mediator. Any being that has um, reached that place of mediation between the above, so below. Um, in this one, you can see again, the uh, four um, fixed signs of the zodiac and the divine child in the center and Isis. Um, in all of the thought deck, you can see the feminine arising out of the center here. Um, it's interesting, this one, his fingers are pointing up and this one is pointing down. And you have this bull behind him. The lovers. Um, and in the lover's card, um, this is not, this is, this card is a six, it's Gemini's card. And um, this is an interesting uh, card here. It's been pointed out that the woman is looking up at the angel, whereas the man is looking across at the woman. And he has this fiery tree with behind him, whereas she has the one with the fruit. Now here we're in the, in the number six, which is that perfect balance. So it is also connected to the, the sun um, and the sacred marriage, the connectio. Um, of course, this card is um, a card for the sign of cancer and also the chariot. The chariots are connected to the great mother's placement to Bina, which is very interesting because, so the chariot is in service to her and the numbers are significant because it's three and four. And of course, you know, um, so. I can't see any of you. So there are any questions or anything that you want to say, please feel free. Um, here the in the strength card, which is different in the thought deck here, it's called eight here, it's 11, that's controversial. Again, you have the eight. This is a very, very important card. Um, this is the feminine um, come through, but she is gaining mastery over that primal energy of the serpent. You can see that very clearly, even though in the, the this deck, it's the relegated to Leo. It is a mastery um, of the serpent and moving into a new level, the placement of this particular card is a very important one 
because it's at the it's above the uh, the center of the tree, which you can see here, and uh, um, moving into the higher will, so difficult path. And the hermit, which we all know uh, well, there was times of its uh, Burgos card. And um, although he seems to be on top of a mountain looking down, it says the fool has arrived now at the top of this mountain and has made this journey and is aged and in going. And yet in this, uh, in this one, we're right in the cusp of Virgo right now. In fact, uh, tomorrow, where um, the sun is now in Virgo. And so we have a full moon in Pisces tomorrow. And we're going into the descent, the beginning of the descent into winter. And here you see the three-headed dog and the light in the darkness. Um, it's a time of incubation. There's harvest, all this wheat around this scene. The Wheel of Fortune, of course, is a 10. And it's Jupiter, so it is the wheel turning. So what goes up must come down, and what goes down must come up, flying through. And this card, which is justice or adjustment, is the card for karma. Um, and again, you know, it is the high priestess in different forms, as she wears different the high priestess, and it's the feminine and the masculine dancing together. Now this is card, um, Marie-Louise von Franz had a lot to say about this one as well. It's a reversal. And here you see the triangle reversed in both of these cards. So he's hanging from this tree, um, but it's a time of in between. This, uh, we'll be getting into why this card is 12, is also a three, and so it's important. And it's, it's a necessary crucifixion time. We, we must go through this in order to uh, arrive at a new way of perceiving. Um, so by reversing the way we see, um, we are connecting to uh, the new world. So here's the death card. I added here the Boda card as well, because I love this card, actually. This is a rising sun. Um, uh, to my understanding, there's a lot of shoots going on. So this um, is not about death in the physical form, but in the death of an old being of the again and that alchemical processes, processes of the negredo, of falling away, um, cutting away the old king and the old queen to make room for the new. And this is where we are. We are certainly in the negredo at this point. And um, um, you can see there's a, scorp a lot of scorpionic uh, uh, catalogical kind of imagery in um, this Thoth side. But here you can see the beginning. Um, but again, he's running over the, the, the king. The crown has been lost. And again, a very powerful card. Um, in the Thoth deck, this is called Art. So it's the card for alchemy. Um, and what's interesting in this, in the Thoth deck particularly, is you can see that the eagle and the lion's colors have been reversed. They're the opposite of what they were. She's mixing fire and water. She is creating an outcome. Um, she, he, I mean, because this is Mercurius, is shifting it, uh, change, making, uh, tra it's transforming. And here too, um, one foot on earth, one foot in water, the crown here waiting and then pouring the water. It's a beautiful card. Um, here's our devil. Um, and always, th because th this is a symbol for air, fire, earth, and water and spirit above it, it is reversed. It is in service to a matter instead of in service to spirit. Um, Of course, in the Crowley deck, it, it's connected to Capricorn. Of course, it's a very uh, phallic image in the Crowley deck, but but it's also very very uh, panic. You can of pan. You can see the um, the the spiral um, on the horns and how foolish she looks. Really, 
you know, he's lost in illusion. In a sense, this is what the devil is. It's where we're lost in illusion. And again, as you can see, this is a creature that never was, and these chains are loose. They could take the chains off. Um, if, you know, um, in this system, um, unbalanced force is, uh, as Stefan Heller says, is the only evil. So this would be unbalanced force. So the key is balance, the key is the dance. And of course, when we're attached to our ego, to the material, the next step, of course, here we have the tower, a very intense card, it's Mars, it's, it's connected to Mars, but it's also, I think, connected to Uranus. So we're seeing, um, I remember being at a conference, um, um, it was actually Michael Mead's conference called the, the World Behind the World. It was after a 9-11. And there were people had this card under their chairs. And I mean, this is the, uh, the breakdown of the old system, the crown, as you can see, this is the lightning. The lightning has struck here, the lightning path and the crown has fallen. This is very, very significant for this moment that we're living in right now. And astrologically Mars is indeed um, in Aries, it's signs. So it's, it's, it's very a powerful time of of, trying, of really violent change in a lot of ways. So, um, but the next is the star and the star is the 17, it's connected to Aquarius. So it's the new dispensation. This eight pointed star is a symbol for, uh, again, Venus. And um, again, one kneeling on earth and water and this is, this is an air sign, Aquarius is an air sign. So um, we're moving the energy between um, transforming it, we're, we're able to begin to communicate through the airwaves. Um, we're getting towards the end, this is Pisces card and this crayfish or lobster crawling out along this golden road um, these, by the way, these little sparks here are uh, in Hebrew called yods, and they're the sparks of God. And so they denote the, this. This is, this is the moon. And the moon, which is, as we know, connected to that foundational level, is also, it's, it's lunar, but it's also connected to dreams, but it's also a dangerous path because, because it also is rule, ruled by illusion. Um, there's an illusory aspect. We, we have here the dog and we have what looks like a coyote or wolf. So there's a, the navigating between this, these two sides. These are the two pillars on the tree. These two sides being um, civilization and, um, and that which is wild. And these images here being Egyptian, this is a scarab. But again, this uh, the merit the scarab moves in the direction of the sun. So the the lunar aspect is always reflective of the sun. You know, it's a reflection of the sun. So so here's the sun. Um, victory. It is of course the sun itself, and the children arrived again. All the signs of the zodiac. This shape is the sh shape of the soul. Um, and uh, 19, and then the judgment, judgment, which um, in the thought deck, it's called Aeon. This particular card, as you can see, is connected to fire. It's called a mother card. There are two others I didn't mention. One is the upside down um, card, the water, which is connected to uh, Mem, which was the, um, the hangman. These are really important. And... Um, and so uh, this card, you can see again, um, the divine rising out of the old, um, that which was asleep waking up, that which was dead being called to awaken. And um, the symbol, the, this is very interesting, the red over here, the red cross isn't just a red cross. It also reminds me of uh, Jung's uh, spirit of the times versus spirit of the depth, spirit of the depths being the, um, 
the above so below the energy running vertically and the spirit of the times being what we're in being um, the horizontal but this is awakening to consciousness the new consciousness and the final card of course the world the universe as we were speaking and we have arrived in the anima mundi once again the spirit animated in matter um, this is our um, beginning and our end and I place this in just to so you can see one way to play with it if you don't have the Hebrew gematria, which at this point I do not. Um, but you can see that the three of the Empress and the 21 of the world and the 12 of the hangman are all, if you condense them, they're all threes. Um, the hangman, of course, has this um, upside down triangle, this reversal, but this is a uh, connected to the um, divine creativity um, that is the pregnant uh, with possibility empress, the great mother, um, just one way. So the anima mundi is the animated world, divine projected in matter, 21 is three. Um, the card three, the empress, and the card 12, the hangman. When we ascend the tree of life from the lower triangle, the astral, winding between the opposite poles of positive and negative, light and shadow, force and form, masculine and feminine, this is not related to gender, <laughs> they are more akin to the electrical currents, which create a third, Jung referred to this as the transcendent third. It's a little on the shadow. So says Jung, true whoever looks into the mirror of the water wills, first of all, his own face. Whoever goes to himself risks a confrontation with himself. The mirror does not flatter. It faithfully shows whatever looks into it, namely the face we never show to the world because we cover it with the persona, the mask of the actor. But the mirror lies behind the mask and shows the true face. And so all of these initiatory journeys that are the major arcana also have a shadow side. We're always bumping into our, ourselves. Um, here's another mask image by Jake Badley. And Jung, how can I be substantial if I do not cast a shadow? I must have a dark shadow also if I am to be whole. And um, the return then is a delicate dance between the poles of the opposites. Balance is a key on the fool's journey homeward. Without balance, we are merely the offspring of the fallen and lie barren on the ground beneath the great oak. Soul cannot live without her feet sunk in the black soil, her humus, her past, and her future. All lie seated where imagination has found root. And so a little, we're at the end. So this is what, to me, it looks like. This is of course Botticelli, um, um, Primaveras. And here you can, uh, the three graces, the all of uh, life and death. I mean, this is matter, um, animated matter. Oops. And So from Ursula Le Guin, it's good to have an end to journey towards, but it is the journey that matters in the end. It's all a loop. It's all a spiral journey. Um, again, Jofra Bostard, beautiful image um, with the light of the radiant light being held in the spiral, the, the feminine arrived in matter. And, uh, this is my next class, um, which is beginning September 19th. It's actually going to be 11 um, classes um, and they're going to be interactive. It's actually the second part to the Mystic Fool, um, but we'll be examining the um, spheres on the tree and their connection to the alchemical processes and the cosmology, um, but it'll be interactive where we're going to be, as we have before, we're going to be backing into the tree, embodying the tree and working with music and art and, um, 
and movement and um, sound. So um, really it will be moving and in, um, inviting the alchemical um, understanding. So it's a work in process and uh, we will be including the minor arcana because the minor arcana does uh, fit on the tree uh, on each of those spheres. So here's Nicholas Rorich's mother of the world and she is the Sophia, the wisdom. And lastly, uh, for Marion Woodman, a uh, little of her who was some of our teachers, some of you are here. Soul to me means embodied essence. When we experience ourselves and others in our full humanity, part animal, part divine, healing comes through embodiment of the soul. The soul in matter is what I think the feminine side of God is all about. The feminine soul is what grounds us, it loves and accepts us in our totality. Again, Jake Badley and to end with this image of the anima mundi. And T.S. Eliot, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. And that's it. So- wow. could, could you leave that last uh, uh, slide up there for a minute so people can get your- uh contact oh, information uh just uh, put it back up give it give it uh 10 seconds or so so that everybody has a chance to see it it'll be on playback so people will be able to stop the video and pick it up but um thank you i uh, hope questions yeah <laughs> well i have a few but i'm not going to go first because i i'm the host so uh, I hope others, uh, let's see, why don't you uh, unshare your screen now so that we can get the, get the, uh, the gallery view on. Hi, um, everyone. Nice yeah. to be back, actually. That's the, the frustrating part is I can't see anyone when we're doing these. Well, we've, we've had uh, up to 25 people on the Zoom and we've had, uh, we now have 18 on YouTube. So that's a tremendous performance for uh, a live feed for, in my experience anyway. And uh, so that means we've had at least 42 people here. Uh, oh, well, welcome. So glad you're here with time. me. It's yeah. been a journey. <laughs> it continues well, to- Well, that, that was really, really beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I, I mean, I, I just thought it was a beautiful, beautiful presentation. And, and thank you so much for that. Um, as I too am starting on a, on a one year uh, journey to address the Tarot um, as a roadmap for life uh, to hopefully include by early next year, the minor arcana, but we're doing one major arcana a week uh, and we've done only three so far so tomorrow night or monday night at 8 p.m eastern time will be the fourth which will be the high priestess uh, who many refer to as the anima uh, she who animates but anyway i i'm going to shut up for a minute and uh let others ask questions and there let's see there i think there is one oh there is one on the chat which is from barbara she says uh hi barbara what what was what was the deck what was the, the deck the middle card in the death came from in other words okay that is from and uh, that's the Boda, uh, Builders of the Adidam. And, and what I love about those cards is you can order them for $8, I think. Maybe it's 10 now. I don't know. And you can color them. And in the yeah. class that, yeah, and, I, and the, you're advised, there's actually a whole program. You have that. Yeah. Yes. So um, the, they also have the Minor Arcana, which I ordered. But you have to have really good eyesight to color those because they're really small. But these are yeah. bigger. And in um, the class I just did, 
that we that I just uh, we just finished with the Fool's Odyssey, we all colored the the cards as we went along, and um, and we ordered them from the Boda, and they're they're quite exquisite. There are lessons that go with them. They actually recommend you do a card a month. Um, I colored mine over a three week process because I was going through a very intense transformational time. <laughs> And it's just incredible because all the colors, they, they'll dealt, the colors, you're designated as to how to color the cards because the colors are specifically designed to fit on the tree. So they're significant color is sound um, because it's vibration and uh, color, sound, scent, all of it, you know, can be used. I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> Over time. <laughs> I, I love the high priestess, by the way. She's, she's definitely, she's the carrier, carrier of the, the gnosis. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, other questions here on the, on the panel. Sula, hi. Or comments. Sula, go ahead. Hi, Eva. It's so good to see you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on the practical side of uh, what folly means, folly. And, you know, because folly leads to wisdom. And what does it mean for you? And can you say a little bit about folly? <laughs> good, great question. Um, so uh, very interesting because I had actually written something. So the fool, because he is zero, I don't know if that's what you mean, because he represents spirit. But what is folly? I mean, folly is moving in towards something with an attitude of not knowing, of not knowing, of stepping off into the unknown. And so we are all the fool. And if we step off in the unknown enough times in our lives, as we do, we eventually, according to Blake, do become wise. My own experience with this fool's journey, to some extent, that you know it's dangerous on an archetypal level. There's a danger when you're working with some of these cards; they do come to life and manifest in your life. <laughs> so you might encounter your own foolishness uh, on the path, but hopefully, <laughs> we wake up. So. Yeah, so I think in a sense, the folly is necessary. As Jung said, Jung speaks to that, that we follow the, the folly allows us to have beginner's mind, to, to, to go through life without knowing, to be open to uh, possibility and the, you know, the arrows and logos kind of the, the working together. I don't know if that, does that answer the question at all? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Go ahead. Just, uh, you have to unmute your, Lucille, go ahead. Hi, Lucille. Hi, Eva. Hi. I have both decks. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I don't know why I thought of uh wanted to ask this question but as you were going through the like the numbers and we came upon upon six the lovers um i was thinking about astrology and the the sixth house is about uh health and work and order and things like that um do you think that's a different it's separated from the numerology that the cards are? It's a really good question, Lucille. And I, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know. I would play with it because the six, uh -huh. that particular card is, is Gemini's card. It's, it's relegated to Gemini um, uh, for whatever reason. And it, it um, but, but, that's interesting to me because Mercury rules both that, both Gemini and Virgo. So that's there's right. Very, that's right. So so the key is, as I, I always remind everyone, is we don't know. I mean, this is a game of playing. We play with it. It's a system of correspondences. 
There's a beautiful quote that I was that I was going to share by Dion Fortune about that, um, if I can find it, but um, because it really is this beautiful system of correspondences um, that you know, in doing in in opening a door, we find another door, you know, and then we, you know it keeps linking up, and it's an intuitive for, for those of you who are intuitives. This is wonderful uh, because because it's an intuitive process. And when we were going through my class, um, we had so much information that we, I kept having to remind people, don't worry if you don't get it because it's going to come through. It'll work on you through your intuition, through the images. I mean, you can't get this material intellectually. It's not possible, you know. Well, yeah, well, I am, um, especially during the COVID-19, period, I have uh, connected with all these different metaphysical systems that my head is almost ready to explode, you know, because I have so much information that I'm reading from different sources, but there's a lot of synchronicities happening the last month or so. Right. I mean, I can, I can uh, you were talking about, uh, uh, Dion Fortune, the Kabbalah book. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. the right name, right? Yeah. I, uh, um, I haven't like looked at that book in ages, but I had it in my hand, I think it was two days ago. And it's just, and then you came up with this uh, invitation here and that's a sort of synchronicities. It certainly and is. I, yeah. And I can't, I, I'm I, I'm not able to um, uh, right now uh, remember uh, very much of my dreams, but lately I'm at least getting a, a word, and the word I think today was mirror, and the message was look in the mirror, and uh, you had that in um, uh, when you were talking about the masks. And you know, looking looking in the mirror. Yes, yes, and and believe me, Lucille, I cut a lot of that out. I mean, I had I started out with over two hundred slides, <laughs> and started cutting them, and um, yes, so there was a lot more on the mirror and the shadow. And um, oh yeah, but but of course, I also held Dion Fortune's book in my hand, the original one. I I I I think I first purchased. Um, so. <laughs> Like, oh. Yeah. So as I said, I, I, it's, I printed some things out and then this always happens um, where if you, it's not meant to be, I guess, whether I can't find what I printed out because I have so much material. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah. But thank you for that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the and things are around. Yeah. I might I might add that it might be a uh, time to take a nap if you're overwhelmed by all the metaphysical stuff because your unconscious has a chance to work on these things and you know if you if you're just always at it uh, you can't necessarily um, appreciate these things and and uh, your unconscious can work on it either through a nap or through meditation and uh, give you some answers. Absolutely, you can um, in these. Um, you can you listen to watch your dreams, for instance. But sure. also these figures, as you we work on them, and Skip, I'm sure you've already experienced this. They do come to life in strange synchronistic ways in your life. They do actually act get activated when you work with them. Yeah. It's a little scary at times. <laughs> That's definitely true. Um, okay, I'm going to ask a question and while everybody thinks about their questions. Um, here's uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky's uh, book. And he based his book on the Marseille deck. And he's got this diagram here. Okay. Um, wait a minute. I guess I'm going to have to... Yeah. Let me give up on my virtual background here for a moment. Yeah, it kind of eats up your book. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with yeah. using it. But 
Uh, okay, so here's Alejandro's diagram. And what he's doing in this connection is he's connecting cards with lines. And these lines represent, uh, you know, from represent the fact that the these lines rep represent the number 21. And so, for example, uh, the, the line at the bottom or on the farthest outside here is uh, the fool and comes across to uh, the world. Okay, so it's the zero card plus the 21 card equals 21. Uh, the number one card plus the number 20 card equals 21 and so on. So, so uh, the number two card equals uh, plus 19 equals 21. So they all, the point is all these lines add up to 21 uh, and, and it makes a connection uh, between these cards. Do you know what that sum total means? He says it's I, the only th I don't know I'm not I only just uh, someone recently last week in, in fact synchronistically sent me one of his uh, uh, videos and uh -huh. so I watched him do a reading. Um, he doesn't work with the tree. He's really psychic from the looks of it. I, I the only thing I can think of um, from his system is that the 21, is the 21 cards. There's 21 cards plus the four, right. which makes 22. Right. Well, he has a chapter here about it, uh, which is called uh, the 11 paths of realization. Okay, so the 11 paths do relate to the tree then, because there are 11 uh, spheres. There's 11 saphirot called mm -hmm. saphira um, mm -hmm. when they're individually. And that's what um, the Sophia class we're doing, because the, the class that uh, we just completed we did the 22 paths. There are actually 32 paths. There's the yeah. 22 paths between the spheres and then there's the 10 spheres, which would make 32, but there's another one because um, the Doth one, the one that we relegated to Pluto, the abyss where the uh, Gnosis is hidden, which is very interesting, but that's the 11th sphere. It's hidden, it's actually behind the tree. So the high priestess is veiled. She's veiled. And, um, and this is, this is knowing like the psychological knowing the gnosis. Yeah, gnosis as in, um, yes, not psych, not psychological oh. knowing, but as in G N O S I S in, in the, in what I call the download, you know, which we do when we, when we have, when we're working with this material, the crown opens, we actually did an exercise in our class where we backed into the tree and opened the crown and then grounded ourselves through that. So when the crown opens and we pull the energy down through the body, you know, embodying this energy, um, as that gnosis starts to work on us, it starts to come true, uh, through. I mean, every time I have worked with this, with myself or with people, uh, in, in working, it changes us. Something, something shifts because we're actually opening the crown to an electrical energy, Uranian right. energy in it. Yeah. So that's the gnosis. And the high priestess um, is the one who crosses the desert with the water of life. Right. Okay. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to make a point about uh, is from the magician, uh, which relates to the fact that all of us at any given moment in our lives um, have whatever assets we have and, um, and it's we that decides what we do with those assets, whatever they may be. And so we're always, we're, we're always the magician and we're always standing in front of the table and we can always decide what our life is going to be from this moment on. And this relates to a quote that uh, I found in Jung. It's a very, uh, which I'm going to read to you, but anyway, um, it is, uh, it's, 
it's from his uh, interpretation of visions lecture apparently and, and it's in volume six of interpretation of visions um, paragraphs 185 and following but here's what he says the great thing is now and here this is the eternal moment and if you do not realize that you have missed the best part of life you have missed the realization that you were once the carrier of life contained between the poles of an unimaginable future and an unimaginably remote past. Millions of years and untold millions of ancestors have worked up to this moment and you are the fulfillment of this eternal moment. One should take each moment as the eternal moment as if nothing were ever going to change not anticipating a faraway future, for the future always grows out of that which is. You must live life in such a spirit that you make in every moment the best of the possibilities. C.G. Young. Okay, so. Wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, send me that link. I actually have visions on my shelf. I will look that up. That's well, amazing. I'll. I'll, I'll I'll send you uh, my uh, PDF <laughs> of my wow. terrible calligraphy. I, <laughs> I decided I wanted to try to learn a little calligraphy. And and so I did that for as Christmas gift for my- Oh, uh, so you did. Various friends. Um, and I keep it close by because it's it always seems to be relevant. Um, and, um, and so, you know, if you think about it in that way, you know, all your ancestors build up to this moment where we're sitting here talking to one another and listening to one another now. And so all of, all of their lives before uh, have worked up to this moment. And it's we that decide what we do with this moment going forward. Uh, and that's an essential Thing. And the other thing I wanted to mention for uh, people who aren't steeped in this, I, I know a lot of people are uh, very um, well informed about the Tarot here, but what I wanted to uh, emphasize is that this is not only a life process. The Tarot relates to any sort of event or project or something like that. So, um, you know, the death card could indicate that the end of a that the end of a project could, could end up refer to the end of a project or uh, could be, refer to the end of a relationship uh, or it can uh, refer to a lot of things and um, and so the the tro is kind of always relevant and it it always is a way, it's not psychotherapy. What I say about it is, and I'm, excuse me, I'm saying this to people on my YouTube channel who are not very familiar with this. Um, it, it's, it's an intermediary waypoint between a conversation with your friends over beer or a tea or something like that. And, being in deep psychotherapy with an analyst. This is uh, the Tarot is a way to, um, well, I, I used to call it moving the furniture around. It's a way to bring to your attention things that might be sore spots uh, so that you can figure out the way they work. <laughs> and and uh, so I had a reading recently where um, the hanged man was my significator and the, the devil was my outcome card. <laughs> and and um, uh, I'm very comfortable with that because I'm also, my type is Hermes uh, or Mercury. So I'm a hermetic, hermetic figure uh, and, uh, and Vulcan. And so I, I both bring things up and build things. So that's why this YouTube channel has 1100 videos on it. 
Yeah, uh, and Vulcan is connected to the alchemy, to alchemy. Absolutely. Yeah, fire. And, and so, um, you know, in turn, what I, my objective in helping people understand the tarot is to understand that it represents, aside from divination, it represents a, a, a life path and represents where you are in, a, in your various situations of your life. And so when we talk about Jungian wholeness, your objective needs to be, I used to think you, your objective was to get to the top of one of the minor arcana, but actually that's not true. It's really, you want to get to the top of all four of them. <laughs> and if you do that, then you've achieved wholeness and completeness. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry I hogged the no, not at all. time here, not but uh, others have questions or comments or anything I've said you want to shoot at? Well, Skip, you know, I totally agree with you in, um, the, you know, it it helps with your, you know, journey. And um, thank you very much, Eva. This has been just absolutely a delight and uh, a yeah. treat for the mind and the soul. So thank you. Um, I'm not quite familiar with the tarot cards, but um, I'm a child learning to learn new things. And this opens me up to the thought of, you know, the tarot cards, like any playing cards, should be fun and open up your imagination. Because a lot of times, especially when we grow older, we lose that sense of play. And I think play is really, really important in our development spiritually. So thank you very, very much. Oh, you're so welcome. And the playing cards, by the way, the regular playing cards did emerge from the, the tarot. I had, I was, for a long time, I wasn't sure which was which, but they did. And they're, of course, the Joker is wild and the Joker, Joker is the fool. So, uh, yeah. Precisely. <laughs> <It goes anywhere. laughs> yeah. And um, the, you know, I have a lot of young people on on my YouTube channel. Uh, about something like eighty six percent of my subscribers are young men between ages eighteen and forty four, and right now, people are having a hard time, um, you know, getting a purchase on life, trying to understand how to get going and see what what they should be doing. And so there's a lot of nihilism out there. And um, well, I have an answer to that, which is uh, the way to get purchase on life is to get one, <laughs> get a life and start making some mistakes, make as many mistakes as you can, as fast and, as you can. And that's the fool's journey, isn't it? It's Surely. being willing to make those mistakes because that's how we learn, you right. know? But the other the other thing that I am now observing uh, because of some other things I'm doing is that we need um, we need handholds we need uh, things that show us what the structure of life is because as you mentioned about the divine child and um, when we're born um, we're we are the divine child at that point and we're born into chaos we we don't know anything um you know we have a functioning body but other than that we don't know anything about how the world works and so the growing up is about learning how the world works and uh you know the traditional ways of doing that over um, millennia were the the world religions but uh, they became sort of passe after the 19th century because uh, people started to notice what Nietzsche had noticed. And, and so then how do, how do you get a clear way of seeing what needs to be done in your life, in a life, in anybody's life? Yeah. And, and, and the tarot cards give you a roadmap for life. Yes, absolutely, okay. they are a roadmap. And, and you know, 
it what you had said i mean the tree itself is a scaffolding it's a ladder that yeah. allows us to see um how to navigate through life you know um it can be really helpful and to meditate on the cards as you're doing i mean doing one um you're doing one a week of the yes. yeah one a week and you'll be people will be meditating on them when they, they will begin to work on people so so i use the major arcana um which were called trump cards in other days um <laughs> where as a meditation tool so you can you can pull those you know um you know actually paul foster case says one a month and just meditate on that um to do an entire reading um it's best to use i think the whole deck you know to to i noticed um i mean you can use just the major arcana but it's it's good to have the whole deck um it, it's um now, what Stefan Heller says about the minor arcana is that when you get the minor arcana cards, they give you the opportunity to uh, rebalance. So it's kind of like a dream where you're, it constellate, you know, it's giving you information that is in the unconscious. The minor arcana can do that too. If you get a really negative, what looks like a negative card, we were talking about the three of swords, it's a challenging card. <laughs> It's in the, you know, it's called sorrow in the thought deck because it's a letting go, it's a cutting away um, of the connection to the mother. Um, but if you get that, it might be information as to how to navigate that and how to rebalance that. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're cutting that away, I mean, where can you find it? Something that balances it. So it's all about this dance of the caduceus. And mm -hmm. I think it's important to remember that none of this is static. And the more yeah. we can dance through it, the dance of the caduceus as opposed to this, you know, here's the one side and here's the other. When we get rigid, that's when we get into real trouble. Right. And uh, speaking of the three of swords, though, it also represents an opportunity to reemerge. And, yes. yeah. and so um, I think I mentioned to you, Eva, that we're actually having this conference tonight because of the um, Spanish flu of 1918. Uh, and the reason I say that is because my grandfather was uh, engaged to be married to a woman who together with her four sisters all died on the same weekend from the Spanish flu. And um, as a result of that fact, uh, he married my grandmother and therefore I exist at all uh, <laughs> so that, uh, that's, uh, you know, one of those things where the three of it, and the three of swords is my birth card, uh, according to one of these guys, <laughs> one of these writers that I'm working with here. And, yeah. yes. and, and so, um, anyway, I have a request here, if you don't mind, just for a moment, I have a request on the YouTube channel that I, I share the the calligraphy, the eternal moment for a moment. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just share it for 10 seconds so that people who are watching this on video um, can take a look at it and, and see the quote in detail. And I'm not going to read it again, but just, just so on the replay, you can stop the video and read the <clears throat> read the quote from Dr. Young, which is is a difficult one to find. I mean, it's it's not it's not one of the more common union quotes, but it's obviously a very profound one. And I I gave it I did separate calligraphies for my two grandchildren who have reached age 16. Um, and uh, do you know, Skip, when were the vision lectures? When did he get, give the visions lectures? The year? Oh, uh, I think they were uh, like, 19, I think it was 1933, 34, something like that. And I did have another question for you, um, Eva. There's, um, you were talking about the squaring of the circle, and I don't want to detract too much, but I, I'm just wondering about Vitruvian man. Does, 
Yes, was, I, I, that was one of the cards I, I pulled. That was in my, it was in my presentation. <laughs> oh, you pulled it out, okay. Yeah, yeah, because there were too many. It's right. part of another one. Yes, absolutely. Can you, can you just give us uh, 30 seconds on the Vitruvian Man and the, the Well, I want to say, um, what being what the question, um, how a square in the circle? You, in well, yeah, the, there's a square, a circle, and a, and a di um, triangle. Oh, yes. You know, I never really noticed that before. Yes. That, um, so again, that I see the triangle as an intermediate, it's the compass. You use the triangle to square the circle. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there's an image that you're pro probably familiar with of the alchemist actually squaring the circle with using the triangle. And, uh -huh. okay, so how does that happen? Because, of course, it's impossible to square the circle, as we know, because of pi, although I don't really understand that and uh, not being mathematically inclined in that way but you know basically the circle represents the infinite um the square represents the earth okay. uh, right it is the manifestation so, so the square is the logos and the circle is the is arrows so. i don't know i don't know that it that i would say it that way the the i think the circle is the infinite it's actually the divine it's this mm -hmm. eternal triangle is about um, the circumference, you know, not having, there's no, it, it is the divine. It, it's, it's not manifest. Mm -hmm. So how do you manifest the, the divine, you know? Um, so when Jung spoke of the eternity, the quaternity, I used to think that, you know, the divine creativity was the triangle. And I remember talking to Marion Whitman once when I first started working with her. And I said, well, it's, it's the triangle, isn't it? I mean, that's the, the tension of the opposites and the transcendent third. That's how it's, it's all about. I've been working with the triangle for, it came to me and it's, it's you know, it just makes sense. You know, it's, it's thesis, antithesis, it's the synthesis, it's mother, mm -hmm. child, it's the trinity. And Marion said, well, Jung said it's a quaternity. And I thought, oh, okay. She said, don't worry about it. She said, don't worry about it. <laughs> and <laughs> so I, I didn't worry about it, but I did research it. And I realized that what he's talking about is this air, fire, earth, and water. And you, the four elements create the quaternity. It creates the elements of earth. Now mm -hmm. that fifth that you saw in that image you just put up is spirit also, right? Because mm -hmm. you, as humans, we are the four elements and the spirit. I mean, um, in, of course, in, in China. China right. and, we, and based on the, the um, axiom of Maria Prophetessa, right? All of our- I also cut out. <laughs> Pardon? I also left that out of the presentation. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but I, we might as well stick it in here since we can throw <laughs> everything in. Um, so Maria Prophetessa said, um, you know, one becomes two, two becomes three, three becomes four, which becomes the one again. And so that's really a, a reference to how everything develops. And so, yeah. So, so I just wanted to say, as I said, I cut a lot out and there were, I had a, a number of slides that refer specifically to that. And to the, because if you look at the triangle, you can, by creating another triangle within the triangle, you mm -hmm. have the four in one. You can see it, it within the triangle. I, I cut all these out because, you know, I yeah, so couldn't, couldn't do every, <laughs> uh, couldn't do everything. But, yeah. but. So yeah. within within that structure, yeah, it's odd. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I just I, yeah. I just so wanted to give an example. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to give an example of Maria Prophetessa so that everybody can think about it the way I I don't know if I'm right and you can tell me if I'm wrong. But so um, you know, either a man or a woman um, becomes two by finding a, a partner. Uh, and then becomes three because uh, they have a child. And that third thing um, then becomes a fourth thing, which is a family. 
and that fi family is a one again. It's one thing, and and so it's developed to a new level. So you've had the 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 one and the one, and they became two, and then they became three, and then they're a family. Now they're no longer the ones anymore. Okay, so now the family is there, but oh, by the way, uh, here comes baby number two. Now there's a, the one, the family becomes two, and now that that second thing has to be integrated into the family. And so that becomes uh, a synthesis project, which then takes the family to a new level where it's a new level. It's now a two, two child family. Or and, you, you could say it's fire, air, water, those processes, which are the three, and then it begin, then it goes to earth and begins again, right? It's yeah. like ohm, it's ohm, and then there's a space and it begins again. Mm -hmm. so there's always the fourth is always, you know, begins both manifests and also begins in a, a new uh, yeah. Yeah. creation. Yeah. So, uh, um, oh, the question, Rika. Hi. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Good morning. Rika. How lovely to see you. <laughs> yes, I apologize for being a bit late. I'm in South Africa, so it's midnight, in the middle of the night. It's oh, early thank morning. you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> so. Yes, and how lovely this was, and I will watch the replay as well. I thoroughly enjoyed this. So uh, when I switched on my computer the first time, there were no sounds, and um, it was the, um, the Emperor's um, tarot that was on there. But then um, I tried a second time and it was the, the color, but the, the tree the, the, it was the symbolism thereof. And I, if you move your head, Eva, I see it behind your head as well, uh, the symbolism there. Yes. Yeah, the tree. Whoops. Yes, tree. Yes, indeed, indeed. We have incre uh, incredible synchronicity with a uh, um, Egyptian symbol of a PhD student that I'm working with. So then I started, my head went, okay. So there it goes and the tree goes. And, uh, and then I started to work with Africa and Jung in Switzerland. And I'm, uh, 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 a quote that he mentioned of um, a father Germany, I guess was his words, and mother Africa are born the divine child called wisdom or transform I am married if father Germany and East uh, um, mother Africa are united or married the divine child called wisdom or transformation is being born and then the one plus one plus two become four so that for me was this morning extremely synchronous wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> that's so <laughs> synchronistic <laughs> well so glad you're here yes yeah. well, thank yeah. you for me and sorry for being late i apologize no no so such a pleasure to meet you finally and uh yeah. yes i mean absolutely um yes so um and you know the 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 work that the occultists did incorporated the greek the egyptian and the hebrew and the hindu so um certainly you can see it especially in the thought deck you can see all of the influences yes. so yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Oops. Right. And uh, one of the things that I've just been observing in my own experience as I've been doing this work is that really all of the traditions, all the great traditions of the world really have done very similar things. Yes. Um, and so recently I... Ha, I've been having a numinous experience with respect to the Bhagavad Gita, and I hadn't looked at it for 50 years. Uh, but when I went back and looked at it, oh my God, it's it's basically Jungian psychology, <laughs> from my perspective. <laughs> and and uh, I had so many numinous experiences related to that. But you know, it also relates to the Tao Te Ching and I Ching, and oh, um, you know, and and the the Torah and the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. They all functionally do the same thing, which is to give guidance 
through life. And I think we've had a problem lately where people have gotten too, too materialistic and, and there's nothing there uh, in the end. Um, the danger is in literal, literalizing the, the metaphor, right? These stories are metaphor. Right. I actually have a great picture of that, which I'm going to share with uh, to this group because uh, many of you may not have seen my picture here, but this, this is a 64 foot motor yacht. And uh, it's um, the name of it is Never Enough. <laughs> and, uh, and so you can see the name right here, Never Enough. And the point is that this is just a material thing. It's, it's the logos manifested, but there's no life in it. And so it only has life in it when people actually use it. And in this particular marina, which is 100 yards from me here, there's lots of pretty dead fiberglass just sitting there where people have put their life into getting boats like this and then they don't use them. And uh, they thought, they thought, geez, if I only could get a bigger boat, I'd, I'd be happy. But the reality is that you're not, you don't. Yeah, you got to come back to the visions quote, you know, being in the moment and just you know, appreciating every moment we have, which right now in our lives, every moment is the eternal, isn't it? Truly. Yeah. yeah very, very much so. Um, anything else people would any like? Any other to... questions? I mean, I'm, I'm ha you know, if you have any questions about any of the slides, I can also pop them back up. So. <laughs> so Eva, this has been lovely. And I, I really appreciate it as a kickoff to the the work I'll be doing over the coming year, and I hope it, um, I, I'm you. You keep saying that your uh, class is is for women. <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, this one will be open, um, and um, I've had um, great gift because my original one, which a uh, number of there was uh, Jennifer, I think you were on the original in the original class that I did um, for the Depth Psychology Alliance. It's now going to be posted and for sale on my website in the next few weeks. And that's a nine part class. And then the, 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 uh, some, of the uh, some of the participants of the, of the last one the, uh, that we did, um, which was just timely because of what happened with the coronavirus, I think we really needed the community <laughs> as well. Um, we're going to be continuing because we have now arrived at the top of the tree. And when we arrived at the top of the tree, we thought, ah, oh, that's the Sophia. So now we're going to bring the energy back down into uh, embody it. And so we will be incorporating um, more of Marion Woodman's um, perspective on embody, embodying this, um, this energy. And we'll be doing it in, with um, entering into the alchemy, which is my passion right now. <laughs> um, the um, really understanding how the alchemical processes um, work in, the, in terms of our individuation uh, growth um, through the tree will be a nice way to map it because it's, it's, it's been an amazing map um and continues to be so that's that and um I, your class is i mean that's a wonderful way to do it uh, skip to be able to enter in and really slowly do it together you know yeah um, i mean I, I don't claim to have any great wisdom on these things i'm uh i'm trying to learn from from the group well, that's the, that's the, that's the fool, right? I mean, we, we take it, we just learn as we go. We don't know. I mean, this really is about juggling and playing with it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, idea, the idea of it is after a year, we'll all really know what these cards mean. Uh, yes. We've done three. And then so, pardon? Every time you do a reading, they'll, 
come up with something different. <laughs> right. And actually, I already did a, a series of videos on divination per se. So the, this is not a class about divination. This is a class about understanding the Tarot as a roadmap for life. And um, wonderful title. <laughs> It is. Well, well I, I, you know, it came to me spontaneously, but I have to tell you that Sally Nichols in, in her book, um, what, what is it, Tarot and, the, uh, Tarot and the Archetypal Journey, The Union Path from Darkness to Light, her, her second chapter is entitled The Map of the Journey. <laughs> Map of the Journey. Right. So, well, you know, it's interesting because the way I originally got onto this whole journey was I was invited to teach a class on Jungian theory at John F. Kennedy University. And I was so excited. And I was looking for a, this was in 2004, I was looking for a map. And so I read um, Murray Stein's Map of the Soul and made, you know, copious notes on the entire book. And that was that and memories dreams reflections were my um main text for the class and when i got there i think i told you the story when i got there i thought well i just really need a map and so i drew the map of the tree on the board because i've been working with the kabbalah for quite some time and uh and that was it the whole class 11 week class came through the tree and what an astonishing <laughs> surprise that was. <laughs> right. Um, there's a question here. What, what is the deck that you get for coloring? And the answer to the question is the Bota deck. This yeah. is the, this is the, it's B-O-T-A. Uh, but you want the, you want the major arcana um, because right. the, the minor arcana are lovely, but they're really too, they're very small unless you work with a magnifying glass. But the major arcana, and they also, he also has, they have their own system. So if you want, you can actually order the whole instructions. I mean, it's very right. esoteric, but, um, but it's this same occultist system that they came out of. And they're based in Los Angeles. Right. And I, I think that we ought to clarify here that when we're talking about an occult system, we're, we're not talking about something that's woo you scary we're not talking about you know magic where i can throw a flaming lightning bolt or something like that we're actually just talking about the way the psyche works and um and you know there were alchemists and others for the last two thousand years that were working on that but the church didn't like what they were that's right. working on so they they found those people and burned them at the stake but nonetheless this is what um this is what depth psychology is actually about and and uh and it's actually about understanding how our psyche works it's the esoteric that which has been hidden is now it's time for it it's to now be revealed open. Right. And as Robert Wang says, you know, there are no secrets anymore in terms of the of these things. There are no secrets anymore. They're just um, it, it's just a question of understanding how they work together. And, and they're useful both to individuals for understanding ourselves, but also, um, you know, for our society and understanding what's going on in our society, because um, the same sorts of forces are um, abroad in our society, shall I say? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, Are there any? Does anyone have any other questions? I'm wondering if any um, our group has. Okay. Um, so I've put a link on to uh, both the chats. Uh, in case anybody wants to participate in any of our other uh, wisdom bat path uh, coll colloquia, we've had about 40 of them now over the last uh, six months. And uh, some of them have been extremely popular. Uh, Murray Stein 
came on on the 9th of August and has had <laughs> over 7,200 hits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, so thanks. he's become a rock star. <laughs> he's a rock star thanks to BTS. <laughs> and uh, and we had uh, Ann Ulanoff and uh, Jill Mellick and their sessions have been very, very powerful. And uh, we have a, another important one um, on Sunday tomorrow. It's already Sunday my time, but anyway, uh, at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Um, Pacific Time, and uh, think about that, Jaws. It's seven in the morning your time. We're going to have Becca Tarnas, who's uh, the daughter of Richard Tarnas, and who has done uh, quite a lot of work over the last decade, uh, particularly on uh, things like the connections between uh, C.G. Young and J.R.R. Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings. Wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful yeah. work, yes. Right, yeah. and, and so, uh, you know, I, I urge you to follow the first link I put up there about future sessions and then, then you'll get, you'll be able to get notices mm -hmm. about such events in the future. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for hosting this and uh, uh, my pleasure. I really appreciate you everyone your, for being your, here. Yeah, and do give me your do give me the links to your course and the appropriate link for your website so that I can put that in the description of the playback video. I think I um, you can also if anyone's interested, you can sign up on my website now. It's it's working finally. <laughs> and I'll be able to sign up for the newsletter um, that will be coming out. Um, okay, S say the know? say the URL for us. Oh, my my website is yeah. uh, www.reclaimingsoul.com. Reclaimingsoul.com. Yeah, and okay. you can sign up for the newsletter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Terrific. And. Right. Now hey, that now that I know men men might be allowed in your in your yes yes next... no we have a, we have a couple who are interested so yes um, it wasn't that men weren't allowed it's just that no one no men signed up for the last one so oh. um, so we went when we we figured that was what was meant to be just, just uh, shows how <laughs> thick thick headed most men are. <laughs> But I see I have at least one other here. Welcome, Jacob. It's nice to see yes, you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, yes, we need both. We need the masculine and the feminine. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you to our YouTube audience as well. I, I haven't been able to follow the YouTube chat as well as I normally would like to. Uh, unfortunately, Tim uh, couldn't be here because of a family issue tonight. Um, and uh, so I'm hoping that he will be back in, in harness also sometime soon. But anyway, peace, everyone. I'm going to terminate. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank it's you, everyone. Bye -bye. And um, yeah, take very, very good care. Travel safely. Yep. Thank you. Same to you. Good peace. night. Bye bye. <laughs>